We will now move on to the informal part of the meeting, starting with a brief overview from me, followed by a brief presentation by Craig. This will be followed by the opportunity for Q&A. As GMG's chair, I am very pleased to report that the company has made substantial progress on a number of fronts since the last annual meeting. First, management took the opportunity in the early part of the year to right-size the company and significantly reduce the company's monthly cash burn. The expense reductions that were made not only reduced operating costs, but also had a very positive impact on the productivity and efficiency of the entire team. Secondly, the company has made significant progress commercializing its products. During the year, GMG began discussions with HVAC OEMs for the use of Thermal XR in their products. It has filed an extend, expanded application for US EPA approval, and it has made significant progress developing aftermarket applications for Thermal XR in Asia. During the past year, the company also discovered new applications for th Thermo XR and is now in discussions with manufacturers of electronics and operators of LNG facilities and data centers. Basically, any product or process where the removal of heat increases the efficiency of the product or process can benefit from Thermo XR. Finally, the battery development team, working closely with Rio Tinto and Bob Gallion, my fellow director and a renowned battery expert, has made significant progress in the development of the company's next generation aluminum ion battery. Apart from the development of the battery itself, the work done by the battery team has resulted in the recent in introduction of Super G, a new product that promises to improve the performance of all batteries. As we begin the 2025 fiscal year, GMG is better positioned than ever. The company has four innovative products, three of which are now in the stage of commercialization. A dozen or so leading global companies are testing its products. And under the leadership of Craig Nickel, the company has a proven and dedicated management team. I would now like to turn the microphone over to Craig, who will describe GNG's progress in more detail. Thank you, Jack. Today I will cover the following in the CEO update. A quick overview of the progress of our product portfolio, which are all targeted at providing solutions for the global energy market during its transition to renewable energy. Product commercialization progress across all our products and introducing a new product to GMG's portfolio, which we call Super G, which we are getting requests for use in lithium ion batteries as anode or cathode additives. An overview of GMG's operations. And then finally, an update to the next generation graphene aluminum ion battery development progress, including a technical update on the sprints we are currently performing on a weekly basis and next steps for its roadmap. All of GMG's products are focused on the energy market transition and all of them are made of GMG's graphene, which is at the core of the company, which is to make high quality graphene from natural gas, in which we are one of only a few companies that are known to be able to do this. Our heat transfer coding has progressed significantly technically and commercially over the past year with the EPA approval documentation submitted with our distributor, New Calgon, and many large manufacturers testing the product for use in their factories. Our graphene lubricant additive is now undergoing in final internal testing with a large diesel engine with customer trials consistently achieving five to 10% fuel savings. Our next generation graphene aluminum ion battery has progressed through hundreds of cells being made across many experiments to optimize the electrochemistry of the battery with our co-development partner, Rio Tinto. And introducing a new product that we have a number of companies request for, our graphene battery slurry, which we will call our Super G product, 
which was born out of our development for work for a graphene aluminum ion battery and can be used in both anode and cathode additives in lithium ion batteries to potentially improve their battery performance. GMG was excited to announce last week that it has submitted our application for full PMN to the EPA to be able to ship to our distribution part in New Calgon for the HVAC market. This is substantial progress and we hope to have the approval within the next 12 months with a number of opportunities where it could be faster than this. We have other distributors in Asia and Europe already underway and a number of projects in Australia already completed. TXR commercial progress is across many industries. We continue to make good in roads in the HVAC market with our expanding distributors industry awards and now the receipt of the Singapore Green Building Product Award. Plus we have a number of HVAC equipment manufacturers who are in the process of trialing TXR on their products for factory coating. Our work with a number of global property management firms is also progressing well. Data centers have also showed a great opportunity for TXR after delivering good savings in data center projects in Southeast Asia, and we also won two Global Data Center Industry Awards. Industrial plants and refrigeration continue to be large opportunities as well, with a number of successful projects delivered in these areas. But the outstanding recent arrival of the opportunities for our coding is in electronic heat sinks. With a number of global manufacturers of these in either early stage testing or discussion with our coding, we can reduce their heat sink size substantially, which saves dollars and material weight. We are a potential solution for the electronics industry, which is currently managing a number of various overheating problems in their products. We hope to bring more on this shortly. TXR can provide double the heat transfer rate as compared to bare aluminium. These calculations on the graph showing the increase in performance have been signed off by University of Queensland. We are also now one of the longest lasting coatings in the world after passing over 15,000 hours in salt sea spray testing in a third party lab and still going. Our model showed TXR increases thermal radiation over eight times bare aluminium at 100 degrees Celsius. And when compared with forced convection, where there's a fan used to flow air, this can be up to 25% energy efficiency gain. This is startling and represents a massive opportunity for HVAC and any heat exchanger as our coating does not need energy power. It is always on and is only once in a lifetime coating. We've been progressing our internal G-lubricant performance testing, getting consistent diesel engine power efficiency as a baseline before the additive is used is our focus. This is very difficult to do as even light rain has been found to change the energy efficiency of diesel engines in the past. Once we have a consistent baseline with the University of Queensland sign off, we'll be able to add our additive to see the benefits. We usually see five to 10% diesel saving from our additive from our customers who have trialed it. And we expect similar benefits from these results. It's very important to get the baseline right before we progress. We would like to introduce you to, to our fourth product, Super G. It is the graphene slurry we have been using on our graphene aluminium ion battery and developed over the last three years. Battery companies can use it in small dosages to potentially improve their lithium ion battery performance. A recent study by Oxford University in the UK shows that our graphene slurry Super G has some very attractive properties, including two and a half times less ionic resistivity than normal graphite anode when in a lithium ion battery. This is a big deal and can increase battery efficiency. Multimodal active particle distribution, which means lots of different ways for the ions to get in and out of the carbon, which is a very attractive parameter for a battery anode. And calendaring, the process where the battery anode is squashed onto the foil does not significantly damage the binder layer. This is also very attractive for ease of manufacture. Our operations now include a modular graphene plant, which is focused on optimizing graphene quality for the four different products. Our heat exchange coating blending plant has now made a number of on specification thermal XR blends. We also continue to operate our pilot blend plan for our G lubricant product blends. 
And now we include our graphene slurry pilot processing plant in our operations after it was built out over the last two years or so. And then we have our battery development center, which is where we make and test our graphene aluminum ion batteries. Our battery's pouch cell reached the expected 1,000 milliamp hour cell size in February 2024. We are now optimizing the electrochemistry before we look to proceed to get external testing and commit to the next pilot plant stage. We do our optimizing with the end goal of developing the battery for our co-development partner, Rio Tinto, one of the largest miners in the world and one of the largest aluminum producers in the world. We advanced to BTRL4 this year and we are focused on electrochemical optimization of this brand new tech battery technology. In the past year, we've made 792 pouch cells with 187 individual scientific experiments conducted in these cells. We have focused across 10 broad areas of optimization, anode, cycle life, assembly process, cathode, cathode coding process, electrolyte, charging algorithm, voltage, capacity, casing, separator design, and weight of materials. Our weekly sprints, the key feature to compress the timeline to deliver the testing outcomes and move to the next testing program focus. As we develop through the development phases of our, with our co-development partner, Rio Tinto, our targeted use case is very much on top of mind. This is a business industrial use case with a heavy focus on safety, therefore no lithium, similar charging times as diesel refueling, long life cycle, economic energy density, high recyclability of materials, strategic supply chain, simplicity and robust design with a high value and low overall cost when produced at scale. After these sprints, the battery remains very much on target for these success case parameter outcomes. We just need to get through the technical optimizations to get there. The more we look into the economics of our production costs, both capital and operating, we see this battery as being much lower cost than the lithium ion batteries to make when at scale. The detail in this area will grow over time as we finalize the performance features of the battery. We expect to progress to using others and or our own pilot plant in 2025 and look for commercial partners before going to a commercial scale investment decision in 2026 with potential sales at commercial scale in 2027. This concludes our presentation Again, we want to thank you for your support and shareholders and your time today.